I'm particularly excited about shooting this video and I'm pretty sure you can guess why. Hi again, this is Amreen from Reader Day Club and today's video is all about Haruki Murakami's most recent short stories, first person singular. So in this video, uh, I'll be talking about the stories that I really liked uh, simply because they reminded me of the time when I read his more uh, perplexing works back to back. And just so you know, I've uh, uploaded a whole video about uh, my top three Murakami books. So you can check that out if you like. So anyway, back to first person singular. Now, uh, what does the title of the book mean? So he's also written uh, South of the Border, West of the Sun, Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World, Blind Willow, Sleeping Woman. So these are just some of the titles of uh, his books and uh, they're just so pleasing to hear and I'm sure you would agree with me if you too are really fond of Murakami's novels. So anyway back to first person singular. Now I'll tell you what it means and coincidentally uh, that is also one of my favorite chapters in the book. It's, uh, it's actually the last one and in it the protagonist, uh, male of course, since uh, Murakami is uh, since Murakami is always done that. Now, um, let me find the excerpt. All right, so he's sitting in the back of a bar, uh, staring at his own reflection in a large mirror. The me in the mirror stared back. A sudden thought hit me that somewhere I'd taken a wrong turn in life, and the longer I. I stared at my image, decked out in a suit and tie. The sensation only intensified. The more I stared at my image, the more it seemed less like me and more like someone I'd never seen before. But if this isn't me in the mirror, I thought, then who is it? As is true of most people, I imagine, I had experienced a number of turning points in my life where I could go either left or right. And each time I chose one, right or left. There were times when, when there was a clear-cut reason, but most of the time there wasn't. And it wasn't always like I was making a choice, but more like the choice itself chose me. And now here I was, a first person singular. If I'd chosen a different direction, most likely I wouldn't be here. But still, who is that in the mirror? So uh, here he, uh, he talks about this whole other person separate from himself like um, like a narrator dictating his own life uh, his own life choices and experiences for him so uh, that's the whole explanation of a first person singular and it's certainly relatable uh, because how many times have we ourselves looked uh, looked into the mirror you know at our own reflection and thought the same thing I mean I know I I have and I still do much in the same way uh, the protagonist in this chapter asks existential questions not just about the self but also about uh, perception about memory about yearning in a way and what all of that means the parts were clear yet the whole wasn't in focus and that very discrepancy unsettled my nerves and this speculative tone is also a part of uh, another story it's called carnival uh, but in this one it takes it also takes the form of uh, a conversation between the male protagonist and the female character so um, they have a very deep and meaningful conversation about how the soul is deeply divided and how we exist in in the gaps between what's uh, real and beautiful and what's uh, evil and ugly now another uh, one of my favorites is the first story it's called cream now uh, now this one without the shadow of a doubt is quintessential murakami so i mean like if you're if you're new to his work and and you know if you haven't read any of his works then uh, shame on you uh, but uh, <laughs> that's beside the point so what I'm trying to say is that you know the the first chapter 
or story would be perfect for a new kid on the block in the world of Murakami. It has all the ingredients that this highly acclaimed author has been praised for time and again. Uh, you know, uh, a male protagonist who thinks he's not good enough for the girl he likes and you know in in this story he's just this ordinary guy uh, living in the city who travels to a rural area a location with no one there so that's uh, so that's another common element and then you have um, and then you have murakami's characters who seem to be very wise calm and rational despite their troubles and and then of course there's the surrealistic uh, um, magical uh, realism that obscures the threshold between reality and uh, and dreams. So uh, the girls mysteriously disappear. The dreams are where the deepest desires come true. So there's no shortage of these themes in the whole book. Then he also talks about memory and uh, and death, which I found to be quite fascinating. For instance, in uh, chapter two. Murakami writes, Many years have passed since then. Strangely enough, or perhaps not so strangely, people age in the blink of an eye. Each and every moment, our bodies are on a one-way journey to collapse and deterioration. Unable to turn back the clock, I close my eyes, I open them again, only to realize that in the interim, so many things have vanished. Buffeted by the intense midnight winds, these things, some with names, some without, disappear without a trace. All that is left is a faint memory. Even memory, though, can hardly be relied on. Can anyone say for certain what really happened to us back then? He also mentions death quite uh, a few times in the book. And in simple uh, sentences like, um, that's one of the few things I can say with certainty in this uncertain life. Uh, now this excerpt is from another chapter. It's called With the Beatles. So uh, yes, of course, uh, of, of course Murakami talks uh, at great length about music, about his favorite genre, jazz. Yes, Beatles is no jazz, which is why the protagonist in uh, which is why the protagonist in this chapter doesn't really care for them. And now I'm going to try to end the video by talking about my last favorite story, the Yakul Swallows Poetry Collection. Now that's Y A K U L T. So it's either Yakult or Yakult. Who knows? Okay. So anyway, to be honest, there's nothing particularly special about this chapter uh, except for the part where you where you feel like uh, where you feel like Murakami is talking about himself in this chapter more specifically about his relationship with his father and about how he started uh, how he started writing and there's one excerpt from this chapter that I distinctly remember but before that let me tell you that Murakami loves baseball so he talks about his favorite team the yakul swallows about how when uh, when when he was a child he used to go to the stadium to watch their games with his father and then uh, and then later in his life as an adult he writes uh, so this is a long excerpt so please bear with me of course winning is much better than losing okay no no that's not it yeah the first thing i like to do when i take my seat at the stadium is have a dark beer a stout but there aren't many vendors selling dark beer at the stadium. It takes time to locate one. When I finally locate one, I raise my hand and call out. The vendor makes his way over. A skinny young guy, undernourished looking. He has longish hair. Probably a high school student doing this as a part-time job. He comes over and the first thing he does is apologize. I'm sorry, but all I have is dark beer, he says. No need to apologize, I say, reassuring him. I mean, I've been waiting a long time for someone selling dark beer to come by. Thank you, he says. I imagine this young vendor will have to apologize to lots of people this evening. I'm sorry, but all I have is dark beer, since most people at the stadium probably wanted regular lager. I pay him for the beer and leave him with a small word of encouragement. Good luck to you. When I, read, uh, when I write novels, I often experience the same feeling as that young man. I want to face people in the world and apologize to each and every one. 
I'm sorry, but all I have is dark beer. So he's obviously talking about his books. Uh, so I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna come out and say this at the cost of sounding slightly creepy. I love Murakami's dark beer. I just love it all. All right. So uh, I think that was it. I hope you read the book, and if not this one, then I can start with my top three Murakami novels. So there's Norwegian Word or Kafka on the Show or The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Thank you so much for watching the video. I mean, I genuinely mean it uh, because I remember when I um, I was so thrilled when so many people replied to my insta story earlier when um i think it this was last week where i uploaded that my next youtube video will be murakami's first person singular so uh, and anyway in case you uh, don't already know the reader day club is also on instagram so you can follow us there for quick book recommendations and excerpts and just our thoughts in general so thank you for being here and watching and supporting. Please subscribe and share your feedback and I'll see you guys at the next video.